What is up my bros? Today we're finally going to be putting the air suspension on the Z, so let's get to it. Alright guys, so we're finally going to be putting the air suspension on the Z. I'm going to try to make it as detailed as possible so you can put air suspension on your car. But first we need to shuffle some cars around. Alright guys, we got the cars all moved around. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the wiring done. That should be probably one of the most simple parts. You're going to have to take off a lot of panels and stuff if you want to do it right and run wires to where you're not going to be able to see them and get them from the front to the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out the wiring harness and kind of go over a little bit where each thing goes where in case you need to know. I got this kit used but it came with all the manuals, came with everything, looks pretty perfect condition. So let's get to laying out the wiring and then I'll show you guys where to connect what all right guys so here's the wiring harness as you can see it's really long so it should fit in most cars this car is pretty short so it's definitely going to reach to the back i'm going to have to find something to do with the extra wire another thing about this harness is i'm going to do a double compressor setup so you got two power wires and two grounds that go to each compressor this little pink wire here is the remote wire so that it's what turns everything on and off whenever you power on the car. There's this USB plug here that goes to the controller. That's going to be your interface basically. And here in the back you got some solenoids and then you got the plug that goes to your manifold. And then these two wires here go to both your compressors. So, so we're going to get this wired in. The first thing I'm going to do is take apart the interior again. So I'm going to take out this whole center console. That way I just have a straight path to get the wires into the trunk. And let me show you where I'm going to route the wires. So I'm actually going to be taking this panel off and route the wires where the engine harness wires come from that way it'll all be sealed I don't have to drill any holes in the body so let's get that panel off and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about all right so now that we got this cover off I'm gonna be running all the wires through this ECU harness Boot. I'm just going to cut this electrical tape off and then we're going to feed all the wires and the front air lines through here. That way it's all super clean, looks really good, and the battery is right here anyways, so we won't have to drill any holes through this part. So I'm going to take off the interior pieces first and then we'll get to cutting that open and then we'll start running the wires. Alright, so now that I got all the interior panels torn out, the center console, you need to figure out how to do that. I'll do a video on that later. I did part of it with the stereo install for the middle area, but this center console is super easy to remove actually. All it is is two screws on each side behind the seats, and then one screw is under the ashtray, and then that whole center console comes out, so you don't really need a video, that's just all you have to do. But I would take all the center pieces out first, and then if you need to see how to take this whole area apart and where the location of the grommet is, uh, refer back to my ECU location video and I go through how to do that. I don't want to go through it all again and waste a bunch of time because this video is already probably going to be pretty long. So so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to start from the trunk actually and route all the wires through the trunk to the front. So what I'm going to do right now 
is figure out where exactly I want the wires to go through. I might just stick them through one of these holes back here. Let me see if I can brighten it. All right, so I might stick it through one of these two holes. I'm also gonna mount the compressors right here. So the compressor cable is gonna go through these holes as well. So I need to make sure that I have enough room for both. If not, I'll just drill a hole through the center of this just to make some space. But I'm gonna try going through one of these holes first and see how that works out. All right. So I got my little grabber tool in here. You can see it right there. And I got it poking through this hole in the trunk here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape all these wires together to that and then pull it through. That way we could start routing it through the rest of the car. So once I get that done, I'll get back to you guys. All right guys, I don't know if you could see back in there, but that was definitely kind of a pain in the ass. I had to cut a little hole right there to fit the wires through because there's like a secondary firewall type thing from the trunk to here so the holes in the trunk did not line up with anything over here so I had to get my Dremel out and cut a hole through there so that I could route it through these holes so now we got the wires in the car so we're gonna route them over to the passenger side and then up through that grommet so I'm gonna start doing that and I'll get back to you guys when I'm connecting it to the battery all right guys I'm gonna show you this real quick so the only wires we need to route through the grommet are these two sets of black and red wires. If you only have one compressor, it's going to be only one set. The other wire is this USB plug, which is going to stay up here in the front area. I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to route it yet. And this pink remote wire. I'm going to be running it to the fuse box on the driver's side, so we're going to leave that up in this area. So we're going to take these two wires, route them around through the inside of this stuff. That way we can route them up through the grommet. All right, so I got the power wires wired through here. I'm not going to hook them up quite yet. I'm going to save that for the end. But now we're going to go do the remote wire back inside the car over here. So now we're going to hook up the remote wire. So that's that pink one that we left out from the other set. So what I'm going to do is use this adafuse. I don't know if you guys could see it too well. What I did was put this adafuse in here in the fuse box, which basically makes it so that you could wire something up without splicing any wires inside the car. I chose to do the lighter. So basically whenever the cigarette lighter goes on, when I do the ignition, uh, I'm gonna get power to the air ride system. So basically we just need to hook this up. So we're gonna go ahead and attach that adafuse and I'll explain how it works in a second. All right guys, this is the adafuse. So as you can see, you can put two fuses in here. These are both 15 amp because that's what the cigarette lighter called for, but the remote wire and the instructions say that we need a three amp. So basically you're gonna keep the 15 amp on this one right here on the left because that's number one so that'll be the fuse to the original fuse and 15 on the right we're going to put a 3 amp on the right because that's what the air ride system calls for so you don't have to have the same fuse in both of these but you do have to have the original fuse in the first slot here the second slot could be whatever fuse that you need for your application so we're going to head Go ahead and pull this 15 out and then replace it with a 3 amp. All right, so I got my adafuse set up here. The original fuse that was in the slot that I took the fuse out of goes in this left position right here. And the fuse that I got with the kit goes in the right, the 3 amp. Um, if you don't have an adafuse, it does come with an inline fuse. Whatever you end up tapping your wire to, you just add this inline fuse with the 3 amp fuse inside here. But since I'm using the adafuse so I don't have to splice any wires, I'm just going to plug this back into the cigarette lighter fuse and wire this end into the pink wire and we'll be good to go on that spot. All right, so I got my adafuse all wired up. All you have to do is just crimp this to this piece and now I'm gonna plug it back in the fuse location and the remote wires all done and we can move to the back of the car. So next we're gonna do the compressors now that we got the remote wire all installed. So basically we take the red and black from this harness that we left in the back here and we attach it to the red and black that are on the compressors. It doesn't matter which one goes to which because they're both running they're both the same compressor, so I'm just going to take these little heat shrink guys again and get all those wired up, and then we can move on to the next step.
Alright guys, I got both the compressors wired up and I got the cables routed through some holes. I go through this part right here and I drilled some holes and routed them out the back side. So I'm going to go to the hardware store real quick and get some grommets for that back hole. It's plastic so it shouldn't really do anything but it'll just look cleaner. And then we can put the compressor tank in and then we can start doing the fun stuff. Well, I got a bunch of different size grommets and none of them ended up working so we're just gonna rock without the grommets. I just wanted them to clean it up a little bit but now it's time to get the tank in. Alright, before I end up putting the tank in I'm gonna put this filter in. This is the pre-filter before it goes to your manifold. So we're gonna put this on this bottom hole right here. These two top holes there's one on each side. If you only have one compressor, one's gonna be plugged and then you'll screw in the other compressor into it. But I have two, so if you have two, you'll screw one into each end. Like I said, if you only have one, there's gonna be a plug in one of these. You could choose either one you want, but I'm gonna throw some nylon tape on here and screw this into the bottom here. All right, so when it's installed, it's gonna look like this. And now we can put it in the car. got the tank all hooked up to the compressors. We got a few more things to hook up like the filter to the manifold but we're gonna put the manifold in last. So right now we're gonna finally get to the coilover part or the bag part of it. So we're gonna jack up the front, take this suspension off and put the bags on and then run the lines and then we'll do the same with the back. So we're gonna get to this passenger side first. So what I'm gonna do is take out the old strut and spring so it looks like on the 350 basically what I'm gonna have to do is take off the bolts to the lower control arm like I did before and then we should be able to just take off the bolts on top and drop it down and get the other one in so I'm gonna do that and then we'll get to the other side all right guys I got the old strut out super easy it's just these three bolts at the top you undo the lower control arm if you need to know how to do that check out my video on that and then just disconnect these brake lines I would probably unbolt this bolt it's like a brake line before you unbolt the tops because afterwards it was a little hard because it was flopping around but now we're gonna get this bag in and we'll start on the other side All right guys, I finished mounting it up. I used these little rubber holders. I'll show you what they look like to keep the line against the firewall. That way it doesn't rub against anything or drag on the ground. And I just used self-tapping screws to mount it and I routed it out this little hole. This is the end of it right here. So that's where our plastic tube is gonna be put into. It's looking like this. And then you push it into there, but we're gonna route it through here make it look a lot nicer so that side's pretty much done now we got to get to the other side and we'll drop it on the ground see what it looks like all right guys I got the driver's side bag in now I just need to put these clamps this is what I'm using they got rubber on them so they're not going to damage the hose with vibrations and stuff so you just put the hose in you close it and then I use a self-tapping screw to screw it to the firewall and then it's solid we won't have to worry about rubbing a hole in our hose or anything like that so and the nice thing about the 350z is there's not really anything sharp by the bag so you don't really have to worry about that if you have a z but if you have another car you'll want to check this whole area to make sure there are no sharp things that are near the bag because over time it'll wear a hole or right away it might just punch a hole straight in your bag so i'm gonna go ahead and get these mounted on there and then we'll start running the lines to the back so i routed the tube through the car put it through this grommet now I can tape that all up because everything I need to run up here is run so I'm going to tape that back up make it look nice and clean and basically we take this tube and put it into this connector right here it's a quick connect so you have what I would do is make sure you tug on it a bit to make sure it's in there nice and solid because if not then once you pressurize the system it's just going to blow off and you're going to lose pressure in your bag so all you have to do is push it in but you'll want to give it some good tugs just to make sure that it's latched. And if you ever want to disconnect it, all you have to do is push this little gray ring right here down and it'll pull right out. So now this is, dis now this is connected. So 
I'm gonna zip tie this up so it doesn't rub on anything and then we'll get to the back all right so this back doesn't seem too bad the shock is just one bolt right here and then two bolts at the top and then I'm gonna take a jack and jack this bucket up and take this one bolt out and then slowly let it down and we'll get this out and then I got to drill some holes in the bucket and the top piece and then I can install the bag in there so I'm gonna get to taking this whole thing apart and then I'll get back to you guys Alright, I just decided to take this whole bucket out because it was going to be easier. So you take this piece that's on the bottom of this, and you place it in here as a template, and then you drill a hole straight through that so you can bolt this to the bag. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll get going. The downside of buying used stuff is it was missing the nut certs for this, because you have to drill a hole into this top part where the spring went, because there's no mounting place for it. So I had to drill a hole, put this nut cert, and luckily I had a bolt that was perfect for it that I was actually going to use for something for the tank, but I'm going to go ahead and use this and get some more for the tank because this is more important right now. So I just put that nut cert in, now I got to bolt up this top piece, and then you bolt the top piece to the bag, so, and then the bucket gets bolted on the bottom. So I'm going to bolt this up to that nut cert I just put in bolt the bag on and then bolt the bucket back on all right she's in the bags installed the new the BC coil over is installed <clears throat> this used one came with a BC coil over instead of the airlift one so we'll see how it rides the only down the only thing I need to get is a bolt for the coil over because the standard <clears throat> because the stock suspension had a bolt welded onto it so I don't have that bolt and I didn't know that and this kit that I bought from somebody didn't come with it so that's the only thing I'm not going to be able to install tonight it's getting kind of late so I'm just going to power through the other side and then I'll get back to you guys once we start doing stuff in the trunk again the light is at the end of the tunnel I routed the hoses for the back bags through the firewall. I just used little grommets that were the perfect size for these and zip tied it to the coil over so it shouldn't rub on anything or get scratched. I'll probably put a little bit of rubber right along this line that way it doesn't get chafed and blow up on me. The last thing we need to do before we hook up the actual manifold is connect this purge valve and at the end of the purge valve is a water release um, sometimes condensation builds up in these things, so you have this little water release. I'm not sure where I'm going to route it yet, and don't worry about this crazy mess. I'm going to come through and chop stuff and reorganize. I have a whole trunk setup planned, but there's a little fitting that goes on the bottom of the tank here. And that's where your purge valve and your water release goes. So we'll plug that in. Then we should be good to go for the manifold. Alright guys, last piece before we hook up the power is the manifold. So you'll have to look up which port goes to what, but we just route them all and plug it in and then we're good to go. Alright guys, I got my manifold hooked up. I got the wiring plugged into the top. It's pretty straightforward. I got both the front uh, I got both the front hoses going to these first two, both the rear going to these two. They are all labeled left and right. And then the tank, and the tank is where we put the filter on. So we run that line to the manifold. Now we just gotta plug it in and plug the battery back in and see if she works. I'm gonna clean this mess up too, but so far the battery's live. We're about to plug in the controller and do our first test. We're gonna check to see if there's any leaks or if it turns on and does what it's supposed to do. Kinda nervous right now, dudes. This is a very intense process. I did it all in one day. Probably took me probably 10 hours to do this, but that's including filming. So let's test out if my hard work was for nothing or not. All right, guys, so, so far, 
It's working as you can hear, it's pretty damn loud. It's probably mostly because I don't have anything bolted down, but the compressors are running. Nothing seems to be leaking so far. I'm not sure what exactly is supposed to be going on right now. Probably should have read the directions, but once this tank fills up, I'll get back to you guys. All right guys, the tank's filled. I don't have any wheels and we're not on the ground, but we got some air to each bag and it looks like the right one's slowly decreasing a tiny bit, so we're gonna have to check that one out to see what's going on, but other than that, every all the other ones seem to be holding pretty steady, so we're gonna put the car back together and wrap up this video. Here it is. I'm gonna start it up and show you it airing out and airing up. The setup is super easy. You basically just plug it in and let it go and set the ride heights and everything. And just to let you guys know, the maximum pressure on these bags, the airlift bags, are 125, so you don't want to go above that, end up blowing a bag and not be able to use your suspension. This is pretty much how I have it set up for the ride height right now. A little high in the back, I could probably lower that a little bit. But here's it aired out. So as you can see it looks really good. I obviously need new wheels. Stock wheels don't look amazing on it and the gap in the back is pretty ridiculous. I could fit like my whole fist in there. So if I'm gonna run these I'll probably get a spacer for now at least for the back so it looks a little bit better but looks pretty freaking awesome so far. It has this Bluetooth app on the phone so you could control this. This is the 3P system. So this is my highest setting I have. It's about 98 in the front and 120 in the back. Looks like a monster truck. <laughs> so that's basically for getting over speed bumps or getting out of my driveway. Then I drop down to driving height, which like I said, I'll probably go down a bit more in the back, probably to like 45. I had a little bit of issues with rubbing and stuff, so I raised it up, but probably go back a bit. Got the fenders all rolled and everything. I'll do a video on that at some point, but Sorry for the lengthy video, I just wanted to get as detailed as possible for you guys so that you could do it yourselves and don't have to pay a ton of money to have air ride. Well, you're still gonna have to pay a ton of money because it's super expensive, but you'll pay a little bit less. So if you guys like the content, like and subscribe. We got a lot more awesome stuff coming in on the Z. So until then, you guys have a good one and never lose sight.